wanna be the greatest. Everybody on the face shit. I look around and feel like everybody is the fakest. I make this every day and I'm impatient. Hoping one day I blow up from the basement. Stay man, the top is so vacant. I don't need shit that I think is amazing. Waiting for my day when I'm playing. Sold out shows for a thousand faces. Hey, give me that crown. Getting my way and to be put down. It ain't your place, all this my town. If I want that shit, then I'll get it right now. I'm losing it. The news if it's some loose shit. G'day guys, welcome back to On Point. We've been away from it for a while and of course a few things have changed. We've still been busy, we've still been thinking about it, but we're finally going to get stuck back into it. And as you can see today, we're on a motorbike. Now of course up where we live, it's far easier to get around on a motorbike. It's just quicker, it's easier. And I suppose it, it's a bit more of an adventure when you're going adventure riding on a bike. Now today what I want to talk to you about is that we bought the WR, WR250F that has got an Athena big ball kit, uh, I think it's 290 or whatever. It's bought out to about almost 300cc. Now what I want to do is I want to talk to you about the pros and cons of, of course, the WRF as an adventure bike and what I've found so far. So I've actually had this bike now for probably three months. Um, I love it, but there are some things I absolutely hate about it as well. Now, prior to buying the WRF, I knew nothing about adventure bikes at all. I saw the WRFs were very competitively priced on the market, and I thought, well, they've got a bloody number plate, they've got um, indicators, they must be right to ride on and off-road. Great. But the problem with the WRF is the WRF is very closely modelled with the YZ, so it requires very regular servicing. Now the servicing intervals on these is, is is very short, 10 hours and I think it might be a thousand kilometres, don't quote me on that, but it's very short. Now servicing is quick and easy, but of course if you want to do big long rides um, adventure style, um, then this probably is not the bike for you. Um, it, it It's pretty snappy as well, even with me being a big bloke and a 300cc, it hasn't really got a really gradual sort of smooth power curve, and on the road it's probably not the most comfortable either, especially with this seat. The tank is only small, so you're not going to get a great deal of riding out of the tank, but that's probably where the cons stop. The pros are, this bike is heaps of fun. I mean, it is, it is quick for a 250. It does everything right. It's a Yamaha. It's just a lovely little bike. Um, of course, when we bought it, it had all the new tyres on it, so everything like that was that was was great. This headlight here that they put on, I'm not even going to show you because it's an absolutely disgusting thing, so that needs changing. But if you were looking for a bike, I suppose, that you still want to just get out with your mates and thrash through the, the tracks or whatever, then... The WR250F actually isn't a bad bike. If you did want to be a bit more, I guess, um, adventure orientated with longer trips, maybe look at the WRR. Of course, me being a Yamaha person, Yamaha was the choice, although now I'm kind of getting swayed towards Suzuki's and stuff by mates, but I just don't think I'm going to give in. <laughs> but Yamaha, of course, is renowned for reliability, and, I, and as I said, I do believe that this is a great bike. But what I will say quickly as well is, if you're a shorter rider than this bike isn't for you, the seat height on these WRRs is, uh, WRFs rather, uh, is very high, and even for me, if, if, if you've loaded up then it's very 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 difficult to get on and off um, I mean granted I'm not as flexible being a big fella as some of the other guys but I do find the seat height a little bit how you're going and I should just quickly add as well if you if you wanted one and you wanted to add like a, um, a, a rear whatever a cargo rack on there you can't do that with these because it's actually got a, a floating a floating frame at the back there so it just wouldn't work you'll just snap um, your rear fender off completely um, saddlebags, I guess, are an option, but with this big pipe that's hanging out the back here, that sort of takes it away as well. I'll burn holes in the bloody thing. But all in all, guys, the bike is a great deal of fun. So if you are looking for a bike that you just want to get out and thrash and still, you know, you've got to cross some roads to get to where you're going, the WRF would definitely be a fantastic thing to look at. Now, just quickly as well, this is a 2003 model. We picked it up for just over 2000. So why is the camera angle changed? Well, that's because the batteries on the Osmo actually just ran out on me. So as I was saying, we picked this up for about the two grand mark. Uh, but and look, it's very affordable riding, guys. Uh, but to be honest with you, I can't really remember where I was up to with the Osmo, so I'm going to leave it there with you staring at the sky. 
Um, if you like this style of video, like, share, subscribe. Of course, we're going to try and take the channel in a bit more of an ADV style direction, um, just to add a bit of mix into it and, um, yeah, really go from there. But guys, that's just my personal opinion on the WRF. Um, and I hope it, if, if you're looking into a WRF, I hope it helped you or whether it did or didn't, whatever. Um, and we'll see you on the next episode. Catch you later.